The retail industry's ever-changing landscape is now impacting two major retailers, both now filing for bankruptcy. Bed Bath & Beyond is planning to close all of its stores and Bye Bye Baby locations by June 30th. The store chain narrowly avoiding filing for bankruptcy back in February, but ultimately filed this Sunday after several failed attempts to turn things around. And David's Rydal facing its second bankruptcy filing in just five years. The company saying it's committed to its customers, saying stores will stay open and orders will be fulfilled. For more insight, we bring in Corey Johnson, a hedge fund manager, as well as host of the podcast, The Drill Down. Corey, thank you for being with us. Uh, there's been a lot of speculation on the Bed Bath & Beyond bankruptcy for months at this point. So why did it happen now? Well, it's happened because they've run out of money. I mean, this company has managed to screw things up so many different ways. And over so long a period, they just ran out of solutions uh, because they've been losing money for so long. So let's talk consumers. Uh, we know, obviously, stores are closing, so that means liquidation sales. Uh, is this at yeah. least a short-term win for consumers in some way? Well, I think that what the consumers are going to find when they enter the Bed Bath & Beyond stores right now is they've already been cleared out. The company's been unable to acquire new merchandise to sell. The company made a lot of strategic mistakes. You know, this isn't so much of a, a victim of the war of online versus uh, uh, bricks and mortar retail so much as this company shooting itself in the foot. And one of the things they did was ruin a lot of the relationships with their former providers, the, the KitchenAids and the Cellophons and all those, those companies that they were uh, uh, buying supplies from to go private label right at the beginning of the pandemic. And it really hurt their relationships both with those uh, providers of the things that they sold and with the customers themselves because they did it right at the head, head of the pandemic when supply chain problems suddenly met, left their shelves quite empty and left them unable to serve customers. All right, so Corey, you're not necessarily pointing the finger at online retailers like Amazon here, but I mean, is this kind of a snapshot of the future of these brick and mortar stores uh, that certainly at one point seemed to be invincible, basically? Yeah, I mean, We've certainly had retailers, whether it's Sears or J.C. Penney or you know Blockbuster or whatever, seen uh, hurt from the effects of technology, but also from the effects of the way they ran those businesses and the way they ran those finances. You know, Bed Bath and Beyond was you know was a, a very popular stock among these meme stock day traders who ran the share prices up, and Bed Bath and Beyond responded at the time by actually buying back some of these shares when they probably should have been selling buying like billions of dollars, using precious billions of dollars when they were going to need that money, and then turning around and having to actually sell more shares to the public. So these confused strategies for this company uh, really uh, hurt themselves more than sort of the death of retail. But to be sure, retail is different in America than it was in a pre-dot-com era. Yeah, and I certainly, I was keeping an eye on the stock, uh, Bed Bath & Beyond, and it, and it really did react uh, so oddly to all of this. All right, Corey Johnson, we certainly appreciate your time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.